We're going to go back in time and book our tickets for a, a virtual tour of Waterford Treasures with Eamon McEnany. Eamon, good morning to you, Hello, sir. Hello, Eamon. Morning, Ollie. Morning, Mary. Morning, listeners. Now, Eamon, today you're going to talk about a variety of statues that are in the museum. That's right, Mary. I'm going to concentrate on the statues of the Virgin, and there, there's less than 20 medieval statues survived in Ireland, and we've got six of them here in the museum. That's it's a the high percentage, thing. Eamon. It is indeed. It's the biggest collection in, in, in Ireland. Sadly, they were all destroyed, and there would have been literally tens of thousands of them during the reformations but this is a rare survival but just to go back to when these statues were made they were made in around the 1300s uh, most of them and the, the ones of the virgin and the 1300s were a time of great building works if you came here and we'd say if anytime from 1250 onwards to 1300 800 years ago there literally would have been like a building site waterford you had the cathedral was being rebuilt grey friars was being built the the franciscan monastery the, the fr- friary the black friars have been rebuilt there'd been earlier little wooden structures there but now they're being built in stone St Stephen's Hospital, St Stephen's Church St Catherine's, so it was really a great building boom and of course all of these churches had to have statues in them and we know that there was a great altar to the Virgin in the cathedral and we also know that there was a church and that the name is still survives in the lane in Lady Lane that was the church dedicated to oh, Lady. So that's where the name um, came from, yeah. Mm. That's where the, yeah. And at the end of that up where the, the, where the library is they actually found the remains of the gate when they were doing some work there a few years ago um, there was a called Our Lady's Gate so there was a great devotion to Our Lady of course this was the great age of faith and what we have very interestingly we have one from the Holy Ghost Hospital and one from the Doyle family gave us a statue that was found many years ago and the interesting about the two statues is one shows the Virgin sitting on a throne with the child looking out the way and of course this is the all powerful Virgin with the Christ figure as a, as a young child uh, looking out at people and, and people of course would have gone and prayed to the, to the Virgin uh, and to the infant looking for, to intercede with God to help them and remember time were very tough. People died of appendix. Obviously, there's no no cure for that. You could die of a bad an infection in your tooth. So die of even uh, uh, any sort of things that you could you could die. Antibiotics quite, quite weren't really a thing. Yeah, mm. they weren't around. No, mm. we're talking about this virus. I mean, sure. Yeah. That's what, that's what we Europeans did to the South Americans when we went mm. there. We brought Ravaged. measles and things like mm. that. Yeah, that they couldn't cope with. But the statue of the Virgin, she's kind of the Virgin enthroned. Sadly, it's just painted because all the original paint is gone. But it's great to have it. And then the other one is interesting. It's about maybe about 50 or 60 years later. It's the Virgin with the child sitting on her lap again, looking out at us. Except this time the Virgin is, has her breast exposed and it's called the Virgin Lactus because she's feeding the baby. And really what it's, it's a move from people People were thinking in, in around the 13, 1250s up to around 1300, the church was triumphant and Christ is always seen as a, as, a, as a great Lord on a throne. And then there's a movement towards Christ being seen on the cross. And it, there's a bit of the same movement with the Virgin, with people's concept of the Virgin. And here she's so, shown suckling the infant. And the reason for that is is that and it's, it's an idea that's coming from continental Europe, brought in probably by a lot of the monasteries like the Franciscans. They wanted to show that for the ordinary people that the Virgin was human and that Christ Christ was, was part divine and part human and therefore he had to be suckled at the virgin's breast and, and this is the whole concept of that. And in other words, this is a God that really understands the suffering of the ordinary people, their trials and tribulations because he is part human and part divine. Th- that's the wonderful thing of having these two statues in the museum. We have one kind of the triumphal God and the triumphal virgin sitting on a throne and then a few years later you get this one, a more humble one of the, the virgin suckling the infant. Who built all these uh, statues like you said, Eamon, it was it was a virtual and industrial site back in the day. I mean, so well, somebody must yeah. have some very talented people must have been making them. They were, and and we think too that they were probably all made in Ireland. Certainly, the one with the Virgin sucking the infant is, is Irish. The other one could be an import from from France or, or England, probably France if it's from anywhere. It's, it's very French looking, but it could also be modelled on a, on a statue brought mm. in from mm. in a bigger statue brought in. Um, but there were there were great craftsmen here. The interesting one with the Virgin is that. The later one, the one from about tw- uh, 1320, she's the one that was certainly made in Ireland because there's lots of features that are Irish about it, uh, is that, and that's why it makes it really important to us, is that she's got buttons on her sleeves and buttons on the top of her dress. Buttons were only invented around the sa- time the statue was, was, was carved in the 1320s. And again, it tells us that the people at that time had no concept of history. They presumed Christ and in his time that people dressed as they did. They didn't yeah, have yeah. this concept of history. 
tree, you know, that we have now naturally. So they put buttons on the Virgin and this kind of shoulder has been very modern. Yeah. But they didn't didn't see anything wrong with that. Very but, interesting. Amy. Yeah. Well, you'd been telling us before about how people used to have to gather their clothes together with brooches before buttons. Brooches, yeah. yeah well, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So yeah. They, this is this is just the next step on. Fierce fashionable. Fierce fashionable. Yeah, very fashionable. And just yeah. another yeah. interesting aspect of Waterford Treasures, which people can uh, check out when you reopen, please, God. So thank you for yeah. that, Eamon, and have a good Take weekend. Care. Fantastic, Likewise, Eamon. yeah, and your Talk listeners, you yeah. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.